Hello there, and welcome to a Behind the Visor lockdown special episode. Thank you very much for joining us in what is now the, the motorsport racing off-season. I'm joined by the Envision Virgin Racing drivers, Sam Bird and Robin Fright, and we're going to answer your questions that you've been submitting. Robin, how are you? Amazing. Okay, great. <laughs> even, in, even in lockdown, he's the same guy. Sam Bird, <laughs> exactly. how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Very well. What has been your best race of season six so far, Robin? <laughs> Saturday. Saturday was the best <laughs> yeah. race. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you did all right in the East. Are you, are you enjoying it? I'm, I'm okay with it, but I cannot follow, let's say, the top three or top four, you know, with uh, Gunther, Werle and Stoffel. I cannot follow those guys, but I'm like sub best, let's say. Sam, what was your best race of season six? Uh, Riyadh. Quite clearly, it was Riyadh. You know what? We've had pace jack all year. Just it hasn't fallen our way, unfortunately. Yeah, first race Riyadh. I came from P12 to P5, so that was the best. Yeah. If you had to be quarantined with another driver, which one would it be? I'd choose Robin. I would. Oh. Not only, not only oh. is my my team, maybe is my friend, and we 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 can wind each other up brilliantly, um, oh, and it's good fun at the same time. Definitely true. Yeah. Robin. <laughs> He'd choose Nico or, or Antonio, for sure. Well, first of all, I invited Sam to come over a few times to my house, but he never came. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, he never invited me to his place. Um, lies, lies, lies. If you could race one, only one of the races that hasn't taken place this season, which would it be? Paris or Rome. Um, yeah, agree. I'm gonna miss I'm gonna miss those two venues, two amazing venues, two cool tracks to drive. It's a shame that we're not going. And New York, actually, New York's pretty cool. Now, for <laughs> me, Paris really sticks out because Paris is one of those Formula E tracks which really Formula E is standing for. You know, like racing in the middle of the city because you are like 100 meters away from the Eiffel Tower. What Hogwarts house would you be in? Hogwarts Robin house. Would be, Robin, Robin would be in Slytherin, absolutely, and I'd be in Gryffindor, 100 percent. Simple as that. Why? Because I've thawed out. I've thawed out. Um, Are you guys having the same issue here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a little bit like Harry myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some spells. Uh, I, reckon, I reckon he's a bit more slithering. Okay. Even the computers aren't agreeing with that anyway. Yeah, but exactly. <laughs> I reckon Jack would be in Hufflepuff. Yeah, I'd just be in the... Anonymous. Irrelevant house that yeah, no exactly. one even speaks about. <laughs> Did that house one. even get spoken about after the first movie? No, because the old uh, Tom thingy was in Ravenclaw, wasn't he? The um, the one that dies. Spoiler alert! In Goblet yeah. of Fire, yeah. he was Ravenclaw. I can't think of any Hufflepuffians. No, I can't either. What is your daily routine in quarantine? Not much, really, to be honest. We have this uh, this rule because I live very close to the border. And half of my family is actually living in Holland. I live in Belgium. So I cannot visit my my other half of the family, which are living in Holland. Oh, you're so, not allowed over the border? No, they're closed. Only for work reasons or whatever, which I don't have. Um, so I'm pretty much stuck here. Um, I did some little jobs in the house, which I always wanted to do. I hang some, uh, some proper lights in the garage now, for example. Using your Stanley toolbox. <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly so yeah I, I did those but then you're finished after like two weeks or so and then you still have five or six weeks to, to fill up um, so basically yeah the simulator has arrived I've been in the simulator almost every day since it arrived to try to uh, be better at it but rather than that there's nothing much to, to do pretty similar to be honest I haven't really gone out and done anything exciting because you can't only thing I did do was the half marathon challenge that I put together with a load of British racing drivers for the NHS and we raised £35,000, which was cool. And besides that, I've been in the gym at home. I've posted some workouts online about doing that and then I got the simulator late due to my connection issues and uh, yeah, been been trying my hand at that. I'm not very good yet, but try my best. No idea what connection issues you're talking about. The no, next question. Yeah. <laughs> Did Sam Bird ever enjoy a Palmo when he lived in the Northeast? Oh, uh, do you know what? My wife loves a Palmo. What is that? So I don't know what that is. It's basically like a chicken escalope thing covered in cheese. There were a couple of times where Holly would be out on a night out with her friends. I'd then go and pick her up 
and she'd come to the door of the car and be like, we need to go and get a Palmo. I'd have to drive her to go to a kebab shop to go and get a Palmo. Because <laughs> apparently that's the only way to end a night up north. Which drink best represents your teammate? And which represents Jack? Sex on a beach. <laughs> Anything. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one, wasn't it? I reckon you're, okay, fine. If I'm sex on a beach, you're, you're an ultimate zombie. Oh, what is an that? ultimate zombie? Yeah, Zach knows what an ultimate zombie is. They're quite aggressive drinks. Do you have one for me? Lukewarm milk. <laughs> <laughs> A fact about Jack, everybody, before he came to Formula E, all he drank was Jack Daniels and Coke, and Formula E has made him into a bit of a wine connoisseur. That is that is very true. A mixture of Formula E and uh, John Watson were basically the two things that, that got me into wine. Uh, yep. And I, I didn't drink at uni throughout my whole three years at uni. Didn't drink. There's your what? That's there. what uni is for, Jack. No, I used uni to go to racetracks at the weekend, marshalling and stuff like that. No drinking okay. and partying for me. This is a good question from Jello Feliciano. Have any of you designed your own race helmet? rather than have a professional designer do it? I told my designer, my painter, what I wanted. I wouldn't say I designed it, but I had like specific things in my head which I really wanted on the helmet, which I have. And sometimes I'm changing something, but the design itself, like the red and yellow I have on the helmet, will never change. Or the RF on the side or whatever. The spelling but, of the uh, name sometimes changes. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, mate. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you've noticed my helmets over the years are, are pretty similar, but I kind of, I like to change up the, the disc on the top sometimes. So what I've done recently is I've given opportunities to either fans or sometimes Flynn or Zach, the boys, um, draw something on the top that's interesting and, and we'll put it on the helmet later on this year. So uh, we did that last year with the Rome helmet. So uh, Flynn, the eldest, he designed uh, a bespoke, like gladiator coliseum-themed helmet for the for the Romy Prix, which was cool. And this year, for one of the races, we're going to have uh, quite a cool helmet. So you you guys will be seeing that later this year. To both of you, in any category you've raced in, what's been your hardest win? Well, yeah, Paris was my hardest win because it, it, the circumstance was changing all the time, so you never know what to expect. What are your what are your easiest wins? Like, have you ever had like a easy win where you're like, oh, that you know, you sort of well, didn't even have to try. Let's say I had an easy win, but I didn't know it was an easy win. Uh, so back in my form BMW times in Zandvoort, it was raining, and I started third or fourth or whatever, and I took the lead in already the second lap. But because there was so much spray and so much water on the track, I kept on pushing. So after like. 10 or 11 laps, the engineer came on the radio to me. It's like, slow down, slow down, you're 12 seconds ahead. And I didn't notice. So I'd say that the most difficult, going back to that one, oh, was yeah. 2012 Monaco. Um, so it was me and Joe Bianchi fighting out for the win. And I had a crash in qualifying at the end of quali, and the car was still broken from the crash in quali. So the steering column was still not not working correctly it's like a right. couple of teeth had sheared off and the steering wheel was never straight and it was going in different places to to be straight so i never knew where the steering was at and then the following year in monaco was probably my easiest win jumped into the lead after the pit stops and then i won by 30 seconds ah yeah i was struggling in turn one with the 12 cars pile up yeah that one <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah i remember me. that <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah. What is your favourite quarantine cheat meal? Have you been doing cheat meals, Sam? Yeah, I have a cheat meal every Friday evening with the boys. <laughs> so Friday evening is pizza night. Uh, so we get a pizza delivery. Well, not a Pacific meal, but I love those soft little sandwich with those chocolate sprinkles on it. <laughs> what? Yeah, <laughs> it's a, it, it's like a, a it, child. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. It's it's a, like a, a Dutch thing. What are yeah, they called? Um, Hagelslag. <laughs> <laughs> I swear he's making these up. I swear he's making these up. I mean, I can take it if you want. I can show you. But uh, oh, have you got one? It says Hagelslag. <laughs> 
Haggle slag. Haggle slag. It's a haggle slag. <laughs> I love those. Haggle slag. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us for uh, for this lockdown edition of Behind the Visor. If you want more, maybe we'll do more, but hopefully we'll be doing one at a racetrack soon-ish, whenever. Keep your eyes across the Formula E social media and, of course, Envision Virgin Racing's YouTube channel. Subscribe down here if you enjoyed this. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Robin. What are you doing now? Eating Hagelslar. <laughs> <laughs>